So we're going to go to uh, uh, Celestial, okay? So Celestial had put out this prophecy, whatever they're calling it out, just uh, the prophecy that according to Celestial, what she has received and she's giving it um, to Tiffany and asking Tiffany that she needs to repent. If she doesn't repent, then all these things are going to be for uh, Tiffany, okay? So we're going to listen to uh, Celestial, okay? Then after that, we're also going to listen to uh, Tiffany because Tiffany is also clapping back at Celestial. So they are out here calling each other uh, witches. So at this point, which prophetess is correct? Who is right? Who is saying what? Because like, you know, we, God is a God of order. Okay. So what has God spoken about this issue? <laughs> if it's even true. <laughs> but we're all going to examine all these prophetess according to the scriptures, guys. Okay. So brace yourself. Now we have. Um, hearing of his ears. Many people are sitting in front of their screens, allowing things into their hearts, into their spirits. God is not with that woman. God does not know that woman. That is a depart from me. I knew you not. And all you who follow are going to be standing there. And you know how the verse goes. Lord, we cast out demons in your name. Lord, we performed miracles in your name. And then he will say, you that practice lawlessness. The enemy spirit is the lawless spirit. The enemy spirit is the one that is out of lockstep with Christ. She's not a clean woman. And the spirit that is operating within the entire ministry, propping it up, is also going to come in direct opposition with God. For what has God said here in this prophecy? The wind is going to blow out of it. We're now going through the prophecy. We're now going through the prophecy. And as I go through, I will also bring out that is that part that I just finished. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say about the one calling herself prophetess Tiffany Montgomery. Prophetess by designation means... This is an officer of God's house in the prophet's function. This is no small calling. This is no small task. I explained that to call yourself a prophet, there are metrics. The Lord must have called you. No one takes this honor to themselves. God must have called you. You have to have that origin story in place. You cannot say, God, if you spare my life, I'll, I'll serve you. And then all of a sudden you name yourself a prophet. You cannot get on the internet and just think, well, evangelist sounds too low and teacher is barely used, but prophet is very trendy and it automatically causes the gullible to give respect. So I choose that. I'm just going to call myself at prophet so-and-so. Jesus came back. He rose from the dead. And he had visible proofs that it really was him that had been put to death. He had the crucifixion marks in his hands. He had the cuts in his side. The people who came to see him afterwards could verify that even though, because it was shocking to see him alive and walking around again, not only with the 12, but he appeared to many others. He it is true uh, what Celestio says, right? Like you cannot just call yourself to be a prophetess. And if you claim to be one, there needs to be proof. For us to believe that you are actually a real prophetess. Okay? So the same applies to Celestial. Who called you, Celestial, to be a prophetess? And who called Tiffany Montgomery to be a prophetess? And what proof does Celestial prove to us that she is a true prophetess? The same applies to Tiffany Montgomery. What proof does Tiffany Montgomery have to prove, to show to us that these are actually called by God? I present to you guys that both of them are false prophetesses. None of them are. They can call each other till cows come home. Both of them are false. Absolutely. Because they do not uh, operate according to the scriptures. Okay. Why am I saying that? Okay. In order for somebody to be a prophet, you must be called by God directly. This cannot be like, okay, you know, you, you were dreaming on your own. You just clown yourself like, no. Okay. But we know today, we no longer have people who operate in the office of the prophet. We no longer have people who operate in the office of an apostle. Why? As you read in Ephesians, right? These were to lay the foundation, okay? The foundation was laid by prophets and apostles. So once the foundation is laid, 
There is no need to lay another foundation. That is why we no longer have prophets and apostles. They were necessary at the beginning, okay, to bring in word. That says the Lord, okay? So people had to adhere to what the prophets were saying because they were speaking on behalf of God. And believe it or not, they were false prophets back then as well. And God gave a test. How do you know that the, the prophet who is speaking is speaking on behalf of God? Okay. If they speak something that does not come to pass, they have spoken presumptuously. You should not fear them. There were false prophets back then. But now we are in the New Testament. We don't even have to worry waiting for whatever they say if it's going to uh, come to pass, right? Why? Because the canon is closed. The scripture is already closed. All we have to do is we just go to the scriptures. That's it. If it's not here, they are false teachers. They are false prophets, okay? You know, to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this, they have no dawn in them. So we don't have to worry if, uh, oh, is there by any chance that Tiffany, she's actually a true prophetess? No, she's not. Okay. First of all, uh, one, she's a woman. Okay. Uh, none of the apostles were female. All of them were, were male. Okay. That's why people out here, they call themselves their pastors, their women. No. If you cannot be a pastor as a woman, what more as a prophet? Okay. So no. Okay, we have exceptions who were prophetesses. Okay, we, we have Miriam, we have Hoda, but those are exceptions, not the rule. So these two, they do not fit in that description in any way, shape or form. So that's how we know that, no, 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 they are no true prophetess. So because the foundation was already laid, like I explained, right now we don't need that. All you have to do, you're just building up, right? We're just spreading the word of God. God has already spoken in his word. This is what he says. Okay, we need to test the spirit. Because right now, uh, uh, whatever Tiffany is saying, she's contradicting Celestial. Whatever Celestial is saying, she's contradicting uh, Tiffany. And one thing both of these two can agree is God is a God of order, not a God of confusion. So two things can be correct. Either both of them are wrong or one of them is correct. But God cannot lie because he's not a man that he should lie. So Tiffany is telling us that's what God told her. Celestial is telling us that's what God told her. So between Celestial, Tiffany and God, who exactly is lying and who exactly is telling us the truth? Hmm? So we, we, we have no fear of Celestial. We have no fear of Tiffany. Okay. So yes, both of them, they, they, they can cancel each other out with their <laughs> demonic worship, whatever else they, they, they are doing. And we, we're just going to be out here and just calling it out because whatever they're saying is not matching out the scriptures. Who were following him. They came and they could confirm him. He had the visible proofs. Likewise, the prophetic ministry has visible proofs. It is not just, oh, the person can handle the word of God well. No, by simply spending time in the word of God and being diligent with your study, you will be able to do good Bible studies. And then what happens is you just go on stage and you do the Bible studies on the mic in front of people. That's one of the things. God will visit the prophet in many dreams. God visits you in many dreams. The one who is a prophet, he says, I will communicate with him in a dream. Of Moses, he says, I will speak to him like I speak to my friend. Even Moses' ministry was challenged periodically, but God always vindicated him. And there were visible proofs with Moses' ministry. The mind of God will always be present with the prophet. And since the mind of God outsizes his planet size, is it possible to be standing? I didn't say prophetic gift, which is why, where the spirit of prophecy, you know, the spirit of prophecy will move upon a person and the person can release a word in the moment. The person can operate in the word of knowledge. The person can operate in the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is when people have a need of something, people have, uh, they're struggling with something, and then in that moment, you're able to bring out the perfect solution to them, for them. That is what you can find actually in the prayer call that I just released about broken families. Look how many people are responding to that. That thing was, record that thing was recorded at the end of a very long day of recording. I had just recorded throughout the night. It was now morning, and I said, if there's, there's still virtue in me, there is still virtue in me, let us pray. So we got on the line to pray, not even about that stuff. We got on the line to pray, but then look how the Lord showed up. That's why it just starts abruptly because at the point where he just showed up and started speaking, I just opened my laptop and I pressed record and there was 47 minutes of something that, that God's people are responding to so powerfully, not planned. 
That is wisdom for your life. As you're listening, you're learning that you need to cut the umbilical cord with controlling mothers, especially controlling mothers are a problem. When, when your mother has hurt or envy in her and you still have the spiritual umbilical cord attached to you in that you really haven't matured into your own person and then there's that attachment with your mother, her envy and her hurt, it will flow through that spiritual attachment and then you become full of her pains, full of all the harsh words and the controlling, the manipulation, the fake tears and things like that. How would I be thinking of all that stuff at seven o'clock in the morning? It took an hour and a half to process that thing, find a picture, slap it on the internet before I could finally go and then see after my own care. Word of wisdom comes to, to perfectly fit the square into the square hole. You have the square hole in your life, the round hole in your life, the triangular hole of pain in your life. The word of wisdom will come perfectly and slot into that and give you. I can understand why Celestia can deceive some people. Okay, she does come across as very humble, you know, very, you know, mellow. She's just, you know, telling you this is, uh, she says she doesn't follow um, Tiffany. So she's just prophesying the things that she has, what? She has received. And then, but when you go to, uh, to Tiffany, Tiffany is more of, you know, she's an entrepreneur. She's out here with, you know, expensive stuff, designer bags. She's looking, you know, all over the place. She, you know, she charges, um, you know, speaking engagements. She has fees. She has books. It's, you know, all, all that. Okay. There's nothing wrong. Okay. Everybody is worth their wages. But I'm just saying, if I'm sitting out here, I don't know any of these people. I don't know my Bible. I'm looking at Celestial and I'm looking at Tiffany. I'll tend to side with Celestia than I would with Tiffany, okay? Just because of the appearances with everything that I'm seeing. But, you know, we don't judge according to appearances, right? Because looks can be deceiving. We're just going to go to the scriptures. Like, okay, you know, this is what you're saying. This is what he's saying. Is it matching with the scriptures? That's it. You might not like it, but, you know, the word is our final word. Whenever we, the Bible, right? You know, this is a collection of 66 different books. It's not just one book. This is like a, it's a library. So you have these 66 books that were written for uh, 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 1,500 years, okay? Different times, diff uh, with different 40 authors, and different, uh, in different continents, okay? You, you know, you have fishermen, you have kings, huh? writing the scriptures. But all of the scriptures, they are writing, it's the same story, okay? It's not about you or about me. It's about God. It's about the triune nature of God. So God is unfolding the story, right? You have the Genesis to Revelation, right? From start to the beginning, how everything is going to unfold throughout history. So there is different genres in the scriptures. So, you know, you, you have prophecy. You, you know, you have epistles, okay? You have uh, narratives. So it's telling you the history of things that have happened. And what I've seen with these people who are calling themselves as prophetesses, is that they put themselves in the scriptures. So, for example, you know, we, we're going to play around it. Eh? they be like, oh, I'm like David. This person is like Saul. No. And he's telling you the story of David. He's telling you the story of Saul. It's not telling you to be David or you to be Saul. You are called to be like Christ, not to be like David or Saul. You are supposed to learn like, oh, Saul so did what? David did what? Let me stay clear. You see what I'm saying? Your example is Christ. So, but once you put yourself like, okay, all of a sudden you're David and you're not, you are going to find yourself in trouble. Because now, instead of you taking the scriptures from what it's telling you, you put yourself in the scriptures and there becomes the issue and the problem. And then, you know, the, the prophecy, right? Like, you know, for example, the book of Jeremiah is specific. It's telling you this is applying to the Jewish people when they were in exiles. There's a reason why. But if you put yourself in there, it's not talking about you. You can learn something from there. But once you put yourself in there, you're going to find yourself problem. Okay. So there is, you know, the hermeneutics, right? They add an interpretation of the scriptures. Just because this verse says, like, you know, my plans are to prosper you, not to harm you and everything. No, no, that's, it's not talking about you. 
<laughs> but let's listen to some more and then we're going to add in more. Because once you understand scripture like that, when you're reading it, you are going to get so much from it. So now you're not trying to fit yourself in to become like David. You see what I'm saying? You're just reading the things as they are. Then you're going to see the picture of Jesus like, wow, this is what God is doing. Look at the sovereignty of God, right? This is what happened in the book of Esther. It's telling you this is the history, the things that have happened. So, but, you know, these are prophetesses. They should know this. They should just know this. But before I get to the warning for Celestial, number one, if you are somebody that has said, I hate all of this division in the body of Christ, I am crying out to you to repent today. The fact that you have not been able to tell the difference between a babe in Christ and a full-blown witch, and you think that God wants prophets and witches to be in unity with one another, the Lord said that you have fallen far from him. If any of you have uttered out of your mouth, I hate all of this division in the body of Christ, and you are of the thought that God's prophets and witches, sorcerers, and diviners should be on one accord. The Lord said that you have fallen far from him. Now, many of you know that there was a young girl that has been doing lives about me. I've seen a few comments saying, Tiffany, she's just a little girl. Pray for her. Somebody may be young, but that demon in them is ancient. This is why the Bible says, when the disciples went to Jesus, tell us who's the greatest among us in the kingdom of God. And he said, if you don't come to me like a child, you won't be the most powerful one. Could it be because the enemy is a copycat? He's a counterfeit. He duplicates everything. He uses the young or children because they're the most impressionable. He fills them up with spirits. And stupid people like you not you if this doesn't apply to you, but you if it does apply to you, say things like, she's just young, as if the demon inside of her is not ancient. I saw a, a podcast of this man of God who spoke about how he married a witch. That's not how you respond if you are a true, quote-unquote, woman of God. Okay, you are out here calling people, uh, calling people stupid. Why are you calling people stupid? What is the reason for you to call people stupid? And which people are you even calling stupid? And, you know, there's more. I'm going to play it some more because she is calling everybody who has done a video, uh, calling all these things out. You are also like, you know, she, she's cussing everybody out. Okay. And very manipulative. Okay. That's one thing that I've noticed. Uh, uh, this Tiffany girl, she is very, very manipulative. And just because somebody is hiding, quote unquote, behind the scriptures, that don't mean whatever they're saying is true. That don't mean whatever they're saying is true. Okay. So her mouth, she, 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 she has a very bad mouth. That is not, um, that is not a mouth of a godly woman. A godly woman should not have a foul mouth under any circumstances. There's no reason. There's no excuse mother's womb they took him to the witch's altar like a like a like how babies get christian but it was a it was a wedding performance as soon as he was born he was covenanted he was one of the strongest demons in africa or the whole continent of africa as a child high governmental officials were coming to him at six four five six seven eight to bless them into the demonic and you all are too blind that you would disregard age and not have a spiritual eye to see in the realm of the spirit that the young are still ancient. There's a woman of God that messaged me. She's in the military. She said, woman of God, do not listen to these people. Continue to treat the young and the children like they are the enemy. She said, when I was stationed in Iraq, we were commanded not to give the children lollipops or candy or chips or be nice to them because their parents strapped them up with explosives. And the second you put down your guard because you think that they're a young child, they blow you and your entire battalion up. Because you're no longer vigilant. The young will not be exempt from this grown consequence that's headed their way. Then I want to take you to Elijah, 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 23 through 24. Elijah, who was 
a prophet that worked in the, in the realm of power. He was a power prophet. The Bible says, and he went up, starting at verse 23, from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and they mocked Elijah and said unto him, go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. Verse 24 says, he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear 40 and two children of them. Because what prophet Elijah knows that many of you don't know is that a child is not just a child. So I, re I responded to our address, number one, the comment that says, I hate all of this division in the body of Christ. I've responded that anybody that says that, anybody that you see comment that, I need you to know that that person is possessed by a demon. I need you to recognize that. I need you to know that that person is not blind and they cannot tell the difference between a prophet and a sorceress. That is a dangerous person. Number two, I addressed your concerns about saying this is just a young person. Listen, y'all, these people can be young. The demon in them is ancient. Keep that in mind. The third addressing I'm going to do is for those of you that say this isn't Christian-like. This is messy. This isn't Christian-like. This is messy. This isn't Christian-like. Roll over with me to Revelation chapter 11, where you're going to be hit with the two witnesses. We don't know when. We don't know where they're funny. Did you see what she's done? She went to the scriptures talking about the story of Elisha. Okay? Yes, that story actually happened. Those uh, those kids were making fun of the prophet of God. Elisha was actually a true prophet of God. They were making fun of uh, uh, make, making fun of the true prophet of God, and judgment befell upon them. That is the narrative. That is the story that took place. Is telling us. So, what is Tiffany trying to tell us? Is she telling us that she is Elisha? That all these people who are calling her out are going to face the same fate that those kids faced with Elisha? Is that what she's trying to tell us? What is the purpose for her to bring up the story about Elisha? So she is telling us that Joanne is throwing stones, is calling out Tiffany, who is a true prophet. No, none of them are true prophetess. Okay? So we're just going to see who, who has a strong, uh, <laughs> you know, like when, you know, when they face on Mount Carmel, right? You had all these bell prophetess, right? You know, trying to go against the real prophet, Elijah. But since all of these are false prophetesses, so it's just going to happen. Like, okay, who has the strongest backing <laughs> Of the, of the marine world, of the uh, demonic world, of the cultish world, of the devil world. That's all. That's how. Because <laughs> the, the, those the, the evil spirit, the principalities and power, those things are real. Okay? So, like, you know, uh, remember the sons of Sceva, they came to those issues. Of, they, 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 the demons were like, you know, Paul we know. Jesus we know. But who are you? And those demons, those guys run out of there naked. Why? Because they were, you know, the sons of Sceva, they were not true prophets, right? They were just, you know, profiting on the name of Jesus. And they were not real. So they met <laughs> another demonic spirit within there and they ran out of there naked in the New Testament. So, you know, they're playing with fire over here. So you cannot just be saying curses, things against people and everything else. That, that's not it, Okay. What fruit of spirit is this, is my question. They're coming. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 11, starting in verse 3, I will give power unto these two witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. The Bible says in verse 5, if any man will hurt them, fire will proceed out of their mouth and they will devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, you know, the word hurt means even with your mouth. Even if you put your mouth on them in this manner, he must in this manner be killed. Verse six says, these prophets have the power to shut up heaven, that it not rain for days of their prophecy. They have the power over waters to turn them into blood. They have the power to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they want. You can read that on your own time. But in those days, you're going to call them messy as well. You're going to say, that's not really Christ-like, you two prophets. But those prophets are coming. And they're coming with destruction in their mouth. They're coming with destruction in their hands. And they're not going to look like they're from God. And you're going to need your spiritual eyes open and know who is who. The fourth thing I want to respond to, and the last for this point I'm making, is... All right, we're just not going to let that one slide. 
She has taken us to the book of Revelation. Okay? It's not talking about Tiffany Montgomery. It's not. Whatever situation that she has found herself in with Celestial, with all these people who are calling her left and right, has got zero, nothing to do with Tiffany. So she can trans expose herself to be like, okay, this is going to be like uh, these prophecies in Revelation. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay? So we, we don't even have to entertain that. Okay? If you read your Bible, like, no. Okay? It's nothing to do with Tiffany. Read the scriptures in context. Okay? <laughs> Who is he writing to? Okay? Remember, this is John on the island of Patmos. Okay? He's writing the things that he had seen in his vision, his dream. There's different interpretations when it comes to uh, to revelation. Okay, I understand that. Okay, depending on your view of eschatology, you're going to, you know, you're going to reference it in this way or in that particular way. Okay, I get that. But she did not even give us that. Okay, because that's not how she operates. She wants to go to something and apply something to her that does not apply to her without even using everything within its context. So, no, Tiffany. Mm -mm. We read our Bibles out here, so we know whatever you're saying, okay? <laughs> All of you, okay? Until you tell us chapter and verse in context, not just uh, telling us sister and the third. We, we don't buy it. We do not buy it. Tiffany, just be quiet and let God fight your battles. Hold your peace, for the Lord will fight for you. I want you to go over with me to Exodus chapter 14, starting at verses 14 through 15. Tell me when you're there. The Bible says, let me start at 13. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, you will see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. I'm about to blow y'all away with something y'all never seen before. Because what the, I want you to read, what the, what's the first three sentences of, of verse 13? What's the first not, first three words? Type me the first three words. Somebody type me in the first three words of Exodus 14, verse 13. The first three words. I want everybody to see this. What's the first three words? And Moses said, and Moses said, it said, and Moses said, it said, and Moses said, Moses said, and Moses said, but four, verse 15 says, and the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Hey! And Moses said, just like many of you are saying, the Lord's going to fight for us, everybody. Hold your peace. Don't say anything. Don't say, don't speak. Don't say anything. The Lord's going to fight for you. And Moses said, and Moses said, but I thought the word of the Lord, I thought God's word trumps anybody else's voice, even Moses's. I thought, the, I, I thought that the Lord words trumps anybody's word, even Tiffany's. I thought the, the Lord word trumps anybody's word, even your favorite prophet and apostle. I thought that you shouldn't listen to me or anybody if I go up against the word of the Lord. I don't think any of you ever seen that. Tiffany, don't say anything. Everybody, should, the Lord is going to fight for you. Hold your peace. But Moses said that. And according to scripture, God wasn't okay with that because he said, why are you speaking to me speak to them people and tell them to move forward why because there's a time to pray and there's a time for holy activity there's a time to pray and there's a time to act i need you to understand that it can actually be against god's will to stop doing and only pray in certain situations it was action time and moses could pray along the way Moses could pray while he was walking through the Red Sea, but God needed action with those prayers. Once again, okay, this is going to be like a broken record because this is how Tiffany Montgomery moves. This is uh, telling the journey of the Jewish people in Israel who were in captivity for over 400 years. Now God is taking them from Egypt all the way to their, they're going where? To their promised land. So the, the, what he's telling us, this is a narrative of what took place when they were, uh, when they arrived in the Red Sea. In front of them, there's a Red Sea. Behind them, Pharaoh and his army, okay? The Egypt was a superpower of their day. Okay, so you are a small nation. The entire military is coming. So now they have nowhere else to go. 
So they are there. They look like, okay, we go back there. <laughs> Pharaoh and his meat are here. In front of us, there is a Red Sea. There's no way we can swim over here. We're out here. We are what? We are stuck. And this is, uh, this is a text. It's actually a very good scripture just to show you how God was faithful to his people. He was faithful to keep his promise to who? To Abraham. Remember? And they are living over there even with, um, what's his name? Uh, Joseph's bones, right? Because he believed that one day God is going to take you guys to your promised land. So this is God fulfilling the promise that he made to Abraham. So this is in time. So let's take a look. Okay, Exodus 14, 13. Eh? And Moses said to the people, fear not and stand firm. Why were the people afraid? If it was you at that point, it's a normal thing that you're going to be. In front of you, there's a Red Sea. Behind you, Pharaoh is coming for you. It's a normal thing for you to be afraid. There's no way out. There is no way out. And Moses is telling those people, right? Context. Moses is specifically telling to those people in time that fear not, okay? Stand back and watch the salvation of God right before your eyes. So at that point, whatever happens there, they can never claim that it was their own strength. It was their own doing. It was Moses. It was nobody but God himself parted the Red Sea and they walked there on dry ground. That was a testimony of God. That's why every time you read, right? Every time you read, what does um, the, uh, the, the Egyptian, the, I mean the Jewish people, they have to say, right? Remember God who what? Who freed you from where? From Egypt. You know, even when Stephen was dying, right? The first mother. He says, right? You stiff naked people, right? The God who freed you from Egypt, right? You're walking over here like in Exodus. So this scripture over here is specific to the Jewish people during that time. So they witnessed, they stood back and saw the salvation of God. It's, this is communicating to them like this is what God is going to do. When you're first, when you don't have nowhere else to go, God is able to do things that you don't even think. You cannot even imagine. And a miracle right in front of them, the Red Sea was parted. It's not saying that you shouldn't respond. That's, it's nothing to do with that. But Tiffany would have us to manipulate the scripture. Like, oh, no, people are telling me not to respond. Stand back and watch your salvation. No, no, no. no. You know, if you want to respond, you can respond. There's nothing wrong in responding. You see what I'm saying? But as a you, as a godly woman, your response, you should not sin in your response. Have a godly response. There are certain things. It's up to you. You want to respond, respond. If you don't want to respond, it's not a sin to respond. Okay? It's sinful to respond in an in ungodly way. It's sinful for you to respond with lies. It's sinful for you. You know what I'm saying? So there are certain things like, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll keep it moving. You, you decide what you want to do. Okay? There's, you know, there's time to mourn, there's time to whatever. It's true, Ecclesiastes talks about that. There's time for everything. So if Tiffany wants to respond, she can respond. It's up to her. So for her to bring in these scriptures, to put herself in the scriptures, like, okay, God is going to fight for my battles and everything. What battle exactly is God going to fight for you? Because you, we've already established the stuff that you have already articulated. They are not matching up to scriptures, Okay. So you are lying on behalf of God. So the same God you're lying on behalf of is going to come down and fight for you. How is that going to work? Hmm? How is that going to work? So you got to watch out, you know, just because somebody has invoked a scripture, that don't mean whatever that scripture is saying applies to them. The scripture over there, Exodus, does not apply to Tiffany. It does not apply to me. It does not apply to us. It was there in time. This is Exodus. It's telling you the history of the things that took place. And we can actually see and testify, look what God did. So for us today, if you find yourself in a situation whereby you'll be like, wow, what should I do? You can remember like, you know what? I saved the God who was able to come through for these Jewish people. He's able to come through for me. But even if he doesn't come through, he's still what? He's still good. Just like the Hebrew boys. They say like, you know what? Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not going to bow and worship. The God we serve is able to save us, but even if he doesn't, we're still not going to do it. That's the posture we should have. But for you to be out here, okay, I'm going to sit back. God is going to fight for me. What exactly? Hmm? What exactly? So the prophets go with me to Ezekiel chapter 13.
The Lord has instructed me to speak against and to prophesy against the prophets that prophesy and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Celestial, there is a word of the Lord for you. I heard the Lord say to tell you, I am against you, saith the Lord. I heard the Lord say, you have not gone up into the gaps, neither have you made up a hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. You have seen vanity. Take note. Tiffany just said, God told her, anytime anybody says that, that, which means God has spoken to you, that is the word of God that all of us are to adhere, are to respect, are to take. It is the word of God. What evidence does she have that God spoke to her? Nothing. So we do not believe that. She can say that, but we know that's not true. God has already spoken through his word. And lying divination saying, the Lord saith, and the Lord has not sent you. You have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. I heard the Lord warn me to warn you all that Celestial is a soul hunter. Celestial is a soul hunter. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 17, likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. And say, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people? And will you save the souls alive that come unto you? Will you pollute me among my people for a handful of barleys and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Verse 20, wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, the Lord says to you, Celestial, I'm against your pillows where you have hunted the souls of God's people and made them to fly. I will tear them from your arms and will let go of the souls, even the souls that you hunt to make fly. And that kerchief you wear over your head, I will tear and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Because with your lies, you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life. Therefore, you will see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Celestial, I heard the Lord say to you, he has found you guilty for lying to his people and he has found his, his people guilty for believing your lies. God said, celestial, you have used deceptive and counterfeit means to dishearten the righteous, pulling them into your cultic snare and your influence. The Lord says, celestial, I'm against your magic charms by which you use to hunt souls. God promises to defeat you and rescue those who have been trapped by your snare. Celestial, the Lord is calling you to repentance. Divine judgment will be released upon your head if you do not turn from your wicked ways. Humble yourself and run back into the arms of God. God told me to remind you and remind all of us that although you practice witchcraft, although you are a sorceress and a diviner, you are still a soul that he died for, that he gave his life for, and that he wants to be saved. But Celestial, make no mistake about it. Your arms are simply not long enough to box the only true and living God. The word of the Lord for you is to repent. The word of the Lord for everybody that believed her lies, everybody that has watched her prophetic words, everybody, a psychic can be true sometimes. The word of the Lord for you is to repent. Your agreement with her, I heard the Lord say, will release the same divine judgment that's over her head. To the young girl that I released the email about. So this is Tiffany bringing judgment on celestial calling celestial a witch 
<laughs> I said, that's, your, that's already called Tiffany. Hey, we, did you see worse again? She did, okay? She went to the book of Ezekiel, okay? Reading uh, the prophecy there. Once again, this is the book of Ezekiel, okay? It's written to the uh, uh, Jews in exile, okay? Ezekiel is the book of prophecy for sure. But the prophecy there, nothing to do with Tiffany. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? So, you know, like, yeah, you're calling, you know, Celestial is a witch. Celestial is also calling you a witch. So they are both calling each other witches. Uh -huh. So will the real witch stand up? Who knows? <laughs> Thank you.